Stops and Mastermind Traders. It is August 9th, approximately 11.15 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. You guys, it's been a while since I've done a video. I apologize for that. Let's take a look at the market, a little bit of an overview. We go back towards the beginning of the year when the market was really dropping and we formed this nice W pattern. Beautiful, beautiful and then a nice run up over the next couple months and then it started to channel sideways and then we had the brexit and a drop or well, there was different opinion on the fall of the market during that brexit event some thought it's going to continue to fall some thought no it'll fall you know for a short period of time and then come back well they were right but it came back a lot faster than i think most thought I mean, after only two days of dropping, it ran right back up. Well, here's a little bit of a concern, and concern, I guess, is just market conditions, but look at the highlight of this yellow box here. All right, that's consolidation. There is no channel like it was channeling back here. This channel was in a nice range. That's about a $100 uh, range of channeling. Here, it's been about a $16 range and it's not like it's going up to hit a resistance coming down to hitting a support i mean it's just one candle after another staying pretty much sideways that's right around 16 days it's about 16 days of going just sideways and then on the 17th day right here it breaks out and then this is today's candlestick this last candlestick that's today's candle as thus far in the day so right now we got a lot of small movement a lot of uh, just very little activity after the breakout well nonetheless here we have uh, more than two weeks two and a half weeks of consolidation well that really sucks volatility out we know that option premiums the premium of an option is made up of intrinsic value and extrinsic value that extrinsic value is built up of time and implied volatility. Well, with the consolidation, there is no implied volatility. Our volatility in the market has been extremely low. That means it's difficult to sell anything because now all we're selling is time. And time, which is theta, is very very small the implied volatility is so low it's almost insignificant it just and not totally of course but it's just very little extrinsic value to sell and when we sell that's what we usually do is sell out of the money so therefore all the value that we sell all the premium is only extrinsic value and with this big portion of the extrinsic value being just about null all we're selling is time very very hard to find anything to sell but a great opportunity to buy because then the option prices are as a whole cheaper than usual so when volatility is high we like to sell and not buy because we don't want to buy options with high volatility this is why we have a variety of strategies. So we sell like spreads, naked puts, cover calls. We sell when value when volatilities are high, we buy when volatility is low. Volatility is low. Let's go take a look at the at the VIX comparison. Let's take a look here at the S&P and compare it to the VIX. And here is the VIX. Now I'm going to give you a long-term view of the VIX. And let me see if I can just make this a little bit longer time. Here we go. Here's the market. And we'll, let's look at this bottom line down here. Now I'm going to change all this to a weekly chart just to get more time. There we go. Now we can see where the VIX started back here in uh, in the early 1990s and look at where the market took off here in March 
actually this is March 9th of 2009, took off, we had a big spike in volatility. Well, we haven't seen a spike in volatility that high in a very long time. But look at the lows. Well, recently, back here in 2014, is the last time it's been that low. And right now, we are almost right there. So we are almost hitting all-time lows of the VIX. Now, way back here, we had a little bit of a, a, a lower value, but that didn't last long. So when we look at the VIX, we look at the extremes, the extreme highs. Well, this is very extreme, but that's not the usual. What is more common are these values over here. circle those. Now these are the most recent highs and I haven't even seen them high since back here in 2010-2011 but here in the last uh, well since the, uh, the third quarter here of 2015 and through this year so far we've had three peaks one two three and then down she goes. Now when the VIX hits bottom you can see how long it can stay down here. Now this is a little different over here. It's a little different over here because the market really wasn't all that uh, all that volatile wasn't really moving but we've seen the VIX pick up in volatility as the market rolls. Now the thing about uh, the volatility it is a contrarian indicator, the VIX is. So in other words, when the market is rising, the VIX should be going down. When the market heads down, well, that's when the volatility should increase. So this over here is a valid view of the VIX. Interesting that it was moving up at this time. But if we notice that this peak, that upward peak truly was this big dip which formed the W pattern down here. Alright, so the market was going up, VIX was going down, that's how it should be. Market was heading down over here and uh, VIX was going up because the market is heading down, that's the indication of fear and that's what the VIX really is, it's the indication of fear. We throw this bottom, this head and shoulders bottom, we got a big spike in the VIX and then here's our market, the big bullish run since March of 2009 and the VIX has just been going down, down, down. And excuse my voice, this is a little on the course side, but back over here I know it's getting hard to see, uh, the market took a couple dips and here is where our peaks on the VIX came in. Well that's just a little bit of a review on volatility in comparison to the S&P 500. So let's go back here and matter of fact let's take one more look at the VIX. Just notice that the VIX is down and it looks like it is going down and these bodies should be of similar size. In other words this uh, body in the VIX should equal the body here on the S&P somewhat. Not exactly, but somewhat. So this big day in the Brexit, well, here's the corresponding uh, candle body in the VIX. Well, that candle body should have been a big bullish candle body. And it kind of was, but you can see that the VIX was wasn't really buying the message of fear. Otherwise that would have been a big bullish body. Now we did get a big bullish run and that's what is indicate uh, an indication of that large wick here at the bottom. Nonetheless the overall view of what we are discussing is where the heck are we in the market? Well I don't know. We, we just had a breakout I like the higher volatility because I like to sell a lot and there's just there's no, not a lot of selling opportunity at this time. But we did get a breakout. 
So will this continue after a breakout like this? It should, and I think one of the very last videos I did, I talked about a breakout that uh, when we are running bullishly like this and we consolidate, consolidation is usually a continuation pattern. Well, it did continue in the direction it was going before the consolidation formed. So will it continue to do so? That I don't know. Well, I'm going to crush this down a little bit here, okay? My chart. And we can see that, let me see here. We can see that I've got some trend lines that came back all the way from the March of 2009. Will the market actually run this far up and hit one of these trend lines? Don't know. There's no horizontal resistance line in uh, in our uh, in our past because we're at all time highs at this time in the S&P 500. Well, the whole message of this uh, video today is low volatility, good opportunity opportunity to buy. Now, for those of you that attended Marquet's class a couple Saturdays ago, you picked up a lot of interesting knowledge and concepts of these body sizes and the momentum of charts. And Marquet in that class did talk uh, about Apple. I believe she talked about Apple a little bit. Look at this momentum in Apple. Very, very nice. So she discussed a lot about using the size of the bodies to help indicate the direction of the stock and and more so what uh, what trend is taking place and where and how to take a good early entry. Well, what she's going to do in the next class coming up, which is going to be on the 20th this Saturday, it's going to be about a four hour class and a lot of you have enrolled in that already. She's going to be talking about now the real particular. She gave you the foundation but now she's going to show you the, 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 the real, the triggers, the points, the necessary information that we have to use in trend, in which we are in Apple right now, nice trend, and the momentum. Where's the best point to get in? To figure out the best entry and the best exit is where you actually have a high level of profit with a lower chance of loss or with a, if there is a loss a smaller loss so this is going to be a very interesting class that she's going to bring to you this saturday so it'll be fun to see you guys there but anyway i just want to give a little of a, a little heads up here on uh, the market market momentum the consolidation even though the market's consolidating like it is there's still stocks out there that are trending like like Apple, there's still stocks out there trending and a lot of stocks going sideways too. And that's why, of course, the market's going sideways. But when you find a stock that is trending, that means it's got momentum in most cases. And uh, with the low volatility, the option prices are cheap. Good time to buy. All right, you guys, we'll see you next video all around.